Hello friends, Doug Fink, Microsoft MVP, 16 years going. And today we're gonna to take a look at PowerShell and TUIs, T-U-I, so check that out. And it's uh, terminal user interfaces. Got a bit of a story about it. We're gonna do this. We're gonna sprinkle in some AI, of course. So let's get going. So if you take a look down there at the arrow, back in uh, July 26th, I posted this on X and I said, why after all these years we don't have this in PowerShell? And below you can see this nice pretty uh, output and it's from this Python tool called Textualize Rich. Um, it's a library for rich and beautiful formatting. And I posted that and you know, a bunch of people came came to me and said, or responded and said, hey, well, if you don't have it, why don't you build it, Doug? And I was like, well, I'm not gonna build that. That's not my, uh, that's not in my wheelhouse. Uh, then some folks came back and said, hey, have you seen Spectre Console? And I was like, yes, I've seen that. I actually try to port it and do some things with it in PowerShell. And I was like, way too many pieces, too many moving pieces that I wanna work with. And uh, the person who wrote that, uh, actually responded and said, hey, have you seen uh, PowerShell Spectre console? And I was like, yep, I know Sean Lowry. And he, uh, he and I had uh, worked on some things and he actually contributed to my original PowerShell AI module and did some really cool things with um, syntax color highlighting for PowerShell that like, came back from ChatGPT. Uh, and then I said, well, I made a comment. I'm like, yes, yeah, I've seen that, but it looked like it stalled. And then Sean came back and said, well, he was looking at A, B, C, and D and doing this, that, the other. And then a couple of days ago, his PowerShell Spectre, which I'll should have a link up there. And, uh, and then I asked him on his repo, I said, hey, how would I build something that does? And so then I asked him, hey, how would I build something like ChatGPT that web interface where I can ask you questions and then it actually gives me the answers back in a nice little UI. So he came up with um, chatty.ps1, he put it up in a gist. Um, if he wants, he can post that. I don't know if it was a public one or not. And he showed me a whole bunch of code, a couple hundred lines of code to make this happen. And uh, I was like, wow, I'm really glad people like uh, Sean is out there that they can build these kind of things because I don't have the patience for that. Anyway, so when you type it and you press enter, now I have a prompt at the bottom. So I'm inside of a Windows terminal and this is all PowerShell driven. The you know, TUI, the terminal user interface, thanks to Sean, and I spelled his name wrong, Laurie. Um, and it's, he called it chatty, so I left it at that. And then I went into the code and I figured out a bunch of pieces and I was like, okay, I'm gonna put my, my PowerShell AI in here. So I've added a couple things in here. Uh, one is I can do a clear, so I get a clean screen, but I can now interact with um, AI and I can do something like capital of France. And then this will actually go out to GPT using my PSAI module and it gets a response from uh, AI. So I'll get the capital France. I can type in Spain and it comes back and gives me the capital Spain is Madrid. Now what's interesting about that is this also has, I've given my AI stuff memory. So it knows the context of the conversation. So you won't, if you typically work with uh, AI in certain environments, if you type in capital of France and then just Spain, the response to Spain is not about the capital. It gives you a whole bunch of things about Spain and its GDP and population and all that. But if you give the AI memory, you get this capability. So let's uh, just play with a couple more. So this is really cool. I have this UI inside my Windows terminal using all PowerShell to get the responses, display them nicely, and interact with my PowerShell stuff that I've already written, tested, and it works with AI. So now I can do something like uh, first five presidents because it goes out, comes back, and then gives me the correct answer. Uh, so that's cool, it's interacting. Now what's, what I wanna bring your attention to is notice the star star George Washington. This is actually a markdown format. So I've also mentioned, uh, and Sean and I have talked over time about, um, wow, it'd be great to have a markdown renderer similar to how ChatGPT does. When it detects a uh, markdown, it'll render it for you, and it'd be really cool. Uh, and then another piece, which is, Cool. is then I can say something um, need a PowerShell FN to greet 
just the code. So I won't explain that, but what's cool is that went up to ChatGPT, came back and gave me some PowerShell I could do, and then it gave me a fence block, so this is how it works. If you put this inside of a markdown for GitHub, this will get rendered as a uh, syntactically colorized PowerShell. Um, and I also said, hey, it'd be great if we could get uh, syntax coloring similar to what he did for my original PowerShell module, but can we hook that up into your um, PowerShell Spectre console stuff? And uh, then, then this wouldn't render the fence blocks, but it would be a nice little uh, set of outputs. Maybe you could put a little copy button up there and then colorize all the syntax where what a function is one color, greet would be another, param another, string and name, uh, and that'd be really cool. So definitely check out Sean's uh, code. Uh, and uh, I'm going to continue to play with this and hopefully contribute to it. Uh, I think it's really cool. And I'm not sure why after all these years, almost 20 with PowerShell, we don't have these awesome different kinds of libraries that we can make nice, rich text in the console. Later.